Every era had its own survival secrets, but few are as overlooked or as unexpectedly powerful as the timber oils developed by medieval builders. When you study Europe's surviving wooden structures from the Middle Ages' massive barn beams, fortress gates, carved doors, and even Viking-era ships, you notice something almost unbelievable. These timbers didn't rot, didn't crumble, and didn't disintegrate even after centuries of rain, snow, storms, and damp soil. This wasn't luck, it wasn't magic, and it certainly wasn't the result of modern chemical sealants. It was the result of a handcrafted mixture that allowed medieval timber to endure generation after generation. Between the 9th and 14th centuries, carpenters, shipwrights, and coopers relied on a moisture-proofing oil that hardened inside the wood instead of forming a brittle surface shell. The mixture bonded to the grain, repelled water, and resisted rot in a way that even modern sealants struggle to match. You can still see the results today on Norway's stave churches and the thick wooden doors of cathedrals and town halls across Europe. These structures stand as living proof of a technique so effective that many craftsmen argue it has never truly been improved upon. To understand how it worked, you have to start with the base ingredient, linseed oil. Flax was cultivated widely across medieval Europe and its seeds produced an oil that naturally polymerizes when heated. Raw linseed oil is thin and slow to dry, but medieval artisans discovered that, when gently warmed, it thickens and gains impressive durability. This discovery didn't happen by accident. It emerged from centuries of shipbuilding, where waterproofing wasn't a luxury, but a matter of survival. A single crack in a hull could sink a livelihood, so craftsmen learned to heat the oil near a flame until it became a thicker, more protective base that soaked deep into the timber. But the real transformation came from the addition of pine tar. Pine tar was created by slow-burning resin-rich pine roots in lacoxygen pits, a process that produced a dark, thick, incredibly hydrophobic tar. Medieval people valued pine tar almost as highly as metal. Vikings coated their ships in it, Barn builders in Scandinavia treated posts and beams with it. Wheelwrights soaked wagon parts in it to prevent cracking during long-distance travel. When pine tar was blended with heat-thickened linseed oil, the mixture became a waterproofing powerhouse. The oil carried the tar deep into the pores, and the tar added rot resistance and flexibility that raw oil alone could never achieve. Heating played a key role in the process, medieval craftsmen understood, would on an intuitive level, they knew that warm timber absorbs oil more easily because heat opens the pores. For that reason, wood was often placed near a fire, warmed by the sun, or even submerged in heated vats of the oil tar mixture. Applying the blend to warm wood allowed it to sink deep into the fibers where it would cure slowly into a long-lasting protective layer. Even today, you can replicate this effect by letting timber sit in the sun, lightly warming it with a heat gun, or simply applying the mixture to wood fresh off a sawmill cut. Some craftsmen went a step further, adding small amounts of beeswax or fish oil to enhance the finish. Beeswax made the surface more water-resistant and smoother. While fish oil especially from cod or eel made, the cured coating more flexible in cold climates. These additions weren't used everywhere, but where they were available, they created a multi-layered protection system capable of withstanding salt water, swampy soil, seasonal freeze-thaw cycles, and constant rain. The recipe became especially valued in coastal towns, shipyards, and fishing villages where harsh conditions destroyed untreated wood within a few short years. What truly set the medieval method apart, however, was the way it was applied. 
Craftsmen didn't just slap on a single coat and walk away. They applied the oil mixture in multiple layers, often three or more, allowing each one to soak deeply before adding the next. In some shipyards, planks were submerged in warm oil tar baths for hours. In workshops, beams were heated between coats to draw the mixture even further into the grain. After the final application, the wood was left to cure for days or even weeks, becoming harder, richer in color, and dramatically more water-resistant. What happens inside the wood is what made this method so successful. Modern sealants form a hard shell on the outside of wood. That shell looks good at first, but it eventually cracks, flakes, or peels, allowing moisture to penetrate and start the process of rot. The medieval mixture works the opposite way. It penetrates deeply, cures gradually, and remains slightly flexible even after hardening. It bonds chemically with the timber's fibers, reinforcing the wood from within rather than coating it from the outside. This is why beams from a thousand years ago still carry the dark sheen and subtle smell of linseed and pine tar. The mixture becomes part of the wood permanently. Today, this technique remains incredibly useful for anyone maintaining wood in wet, humid, or outdoor environments. Homesteaders use it for sheds, barns, and cabins. Traditional boat builders still rely on it for holes and planking. Craftsmen use it on axe handles, tool shafts, bowls, outdoor furniture, fence posts, and exposed beams. It provides not only exceptional protection, but also a beautiful finish. As the mixture cures, the wood darkens, the grain becomes more pronounced, and the surface takes on a rich, warm sheen, reminiscent of medieval timber frames. This ancient method requires far more patience than money, but the results speak for themselves. For centuries, it kept ships afloat, tools functional, beams solid, and homes dry. And remarkably, the same mixture medieval craftsmen once heated over open flames can still be made today with simple, accessible ingredients. If you're restoring a shed, building a cabin, maintaining wooden tools, or simply want to use a proven historical technique that outperforms many modern products, this medieval timber oil remains one of the most reliable wood treatments ever created. This is the kind of old world knowledge worth preserving not because it's nostalgic, but because it works. And if you value these deep, time-tested methods, stay tuned. Because there are countless more forgotten technologies from our ancestors that still have real, practical power today.